Abba Yahweh, Malach Avalam. That's our father, king everlasting, creator of the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. We give you all praise, honor, and esteem. Halal Yah, Halal Yah. And said, Toda Reba Abba for blessing and keeping us throughout the week, Abba Yah, daily, every minute, Abba Yah, every second. And as the testimonies come out tonight, Abba Yah, your word is true. You are faithful. You cover us, Abba Yah. We just ask, Abba Yah, that you just continue to feed us and strengthen us, Abba Yah. As Ima Audrey said, that we see the trials, we see your miracles, Abba Yah. You said, Abba Yah, you are a high tower. And you will never forsake us, Abba Yah. So as we grow, Abba Yah, under your grace and your mercy, Abba Yah, we just ask you continue to open our eyes, Abba Yah, strengthen our faith, Abba Yah, and continue to let us marvel in the miracles that are taking place today, Abba Yah, your works being done in this earth. And as times get more and more treacherous, Abba Yah, that you hedge of protection around us, Abba Yah. You allow your Malachim to go before us, Abba Yah, and pave the way and continue to let our light shine, Abba Yah, into your majesty, your might, your power, your love, your mercy. And as we go into the lesson tonight, Abba Yah, just soften our hearts, Abba Yah, and allow your Ruach to penetrate and we can put on all the power, Abba Yah, all the protection, all the love. And in all things, Abba Yah, we just give you thanks. Told Reba, Abba, blessed are you, Yahweh. Blessed is your name, Yahweh, and blessed is he that comes in your name. Halal Yah, Halal Yah. Told Reba, Abba, Aman. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Well, amen. All right, Mr. Bakar, I'm going to be continuing on the lesson that we were going into last uh, Shabbat before we get back to our scheduled reading. And I think we may tie it in with this lesson tonight. But we were covering last uh, Shabbat Eve, we was covering uh, willful sin uh, versus presumptuous sin or uh, un, uh, sins of ignorance and willful sin, which is going to be presumptuous sin. And we covered in the word that the most high winks at us in our ignorance. However, when we have knowledge of something, there's no longer winking taking place. So when we read in his laws, we seen that whenever someone sinned for ignorance, that he forgave them. They had a certain offering that would have to be presented. They would have to acknowledge their sin or their fault, even though they didn't know it was sin at the time. And once they acknowledged it, they made the sacrifice for it and they were forgiven. But then it also went to presumptuous sin or willful sin, meaning when a person just outright defies uh, the word of the Most High, rebels, the word of the Most High, hates the word of the Most High, and just willingly do, do what they want to do, then the Most High actually, according to his law, there was no forgiveness written in the law for that. We were reading in the book of, of Hebrews, um, the 10th chapter, when it says, uh, for if we sin willfully after we have knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no sacrifice for sin. So the sacrifice was actually for mistakes that were made, not really for us just willingly just saying, oh, I got this offering. So those who are wealthy and well off, of course, they had a lot of animals they could sacrifice during the old times for their sins. Those who were uh, less fortunate, they didn't have as many animals to be able to bring forward for their sacrifice of their sin. However, it was never intended for us to have to sacrifice for sin because as we covered also, the most high rather have obedience than sacrifice. The reason why I'm going back into this lesson now is because um, it is upon me that the days and uh, times that we're living in, it is of utmost importance for us to get our walk right with the most high because no man knows the time nor the hour. So with everything going on, the, uh, the pandemic, uh, violence and everything is starting to heighten up. And just the changes that's going on in the world, it is time for us to get on the side we're on. If we're on Yah's side, we need to walk upright. 
And if not, you know, there's a, a line being drawn in the sand between good and evil. And we need to make sure that we're on the toe, but we're on the good side or we're on the side of Yah and have proper understanding that we cannot just keep going through life, living an unrepentant life and willingly doing things wrong when we know better. All right. So tonight, uh, as I'm going into it, so mercy for ignorance is what I'm going to speak on tonight. Mercy for ignorance. And the purpose of this study is to examine Yah's mercy as it applies to man's lack of understanding, okay, concerning the laws of the Most High. So there is some lack of understanding because we did not grow up with this word as our forefathers did. We grew up in an era where they taught us false doctrines. So therefore, the things that we know or we have learned, some of it has been an error. Those are the things that the Most High actually winks at. But now that we are waking up to the truth, you know, there's some things that we're trying to do right in his laws and we're still making mistakes. The most high winks at those things, but he's merciful when we are attempting to live righteous, but making mistakes while making the attempt to live righteous because we don't understand fully. But if we do understand his commandment, thou shalt not, if there's something that he said we shall not, and we are just outright ignoring and doing the most high is going to be very upset with that. All right. So, um, so mercy for ignorance is kind of where we're going at tonight. Uh, y'all stick at one moment. I don't know. All right. All right. So it says, uh, so the objective or the purpose of this lesson tonight is to try to answer the following questions. What is mercy for ignorance? Who receives mercy for ignorance? When are we no longer ignorant? How will we be judged? Who are our brothers and sisters? So there's a lot of things we're going to try to cover tonight. All right. Kanaki, if you could give me a mic check. Give me a mic check. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. If we could, let's start tonight's reading off with 2 Peter. 2 Peter, chapter 2, start with verse 1. 2 Peter, chapter 2. We're going to start with verse one. Second Peter chapter two, verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the master that, that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumber of not. For Philemon spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the unrighteous. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemned with them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live unrighteous. And deliver just lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Okay, so let's stop here for a second. Um, and before I go into edifying anything, I'll take about the first two or three, and you only have like 60 seconds for the sake of time. The first two or three who raise their hands, I'll uh, give you the floor. What are you getting thus far from reading uh, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 and those verses that he just read? What are you getting? You only have like 60 seconds to respond for the sake of time. So the first two people, what's something that's jumping out in these verses to you? And tonight I want us to be interactive in certain part parts because it says, with all that getting, get understanding. Um, so I like to see if you understand what you're reading for yourself and what's jumping out to you. So the first three, 
I'm gonna have to make my Jeopardy sound. I don't see no hands up yet. Do, 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 do. All right, Shah Shamar, what do you have, Aki? Yeah, what I took from this was when he, um, the part we're talking about, Noah was, the days of Noah was an example for those that, you know, may live unrighteous, you know, so we know that those people, they did not survive. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a scary verse when you, when you, when you hear it, you know. Those people didn't survive, only the righteous survived, which is Noah, his family, and the animals that the most high told him to put on the ark. So <laughs> I you? All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Since I see no other hands up, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. So uh that was a good pull, Sha. But uh remember when we go through the word and we study, and I use the term also try to see what's not written there, right? So, so it will help you be a better witness when you're trying to witness to family, friends, and loved ones that may be of a different belief. So, you know, commonly today we, we are under, uh, in the churches, they're under the doctrine that says the laws are done away with, and they do not really reference Old Testament writings like that because they're under what they call the New Testament or the church doctrine of the New Testament. So, and that's saying that the laws are done away with. So let's go back to this for a moment because I want to pull out some points. It says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the master that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. So it's letting us know that in the times past, and this was speaking actually to the disciples that was with Mashiach or the Messiah or Paul during Paul's era, they are now referencing back to an era before them, which goes back to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 tribes that they came into existence. So they're referring back to them. And now they, what they're saying here is, and just know that there were false prophets back then. There are false prophets among you. And Mr. Bacot is online today. There are false teachers and prophets among us today that are bringing forth what? Damnable doctrines or heresies. Words that are actually against the word of the most high. So what is happening is with those things and those teachings, there are some people that are up under those damnable doctrines that are what? They're making mistakes from ignorance, from listening to a false shepherd. However, we still, as the word tell us to do what? Study to show our self-approved, to write to divide the word of truth so that the workman would not be ashamed. So we still have an accountability to self as to, and to the most high to not only just listen. So anything I'm teaching to you all, you know, I always tell you to go back and verify Take your notes, pray about it, read it again on your own time to make sure I'm coming forth from the word and it's lining up with the word. So it says, and with these teachings, they brought upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious or their harmful or damaging ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. What's going on today when people speak about the truth? How's the truth received? The Most High has a law written that says that man should not lie with mankind as he lie with a woman. That's an abomination. If we speak against that today because someone has now changed times and laws and have said that is okay, the truth is spoken about evilly now because we're looked at as being insensitive. We're looked at as being not kind, non-loving, when actually we are loving because the Most High said his love is what? To keep his commandments. So he has a way in which a man is to go and Shaitan has now tricked the world with these heresies and have people thinking that evil is good and good is evil. And so, so many people now are getting in behind these evil ways and is speaking against the truth. And through covetous, um, and through covetedness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Here's what I want us to see that's not written. For if Elohim spared not the angels of the Malachim that sinned, but cast them down to Sheol or hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be restored unto judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah and the eight persons, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So it says that the most high destroyed the angels or the Malachim of old, who were unrighteous. And he also did not spare the old world, 
for unrighteousness, but only spared Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and his family. Where can we find anything about Noah and the Malachim or the angels? They were already written in the Old Testament. So what's not written here is what I'm going to edify to you now is this is New Testament writing that's referring back into the Old Testament. So if anyone is going to understand this scripture, they must understand what happened in the days of Noah. What was going on the day of Noah? In the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, it said man was evil continually and their minds were set on doing evil. Their mind was not focused on the most high and only eight people were really one person because he got his family on board with him, but everybody was doing their own thing. So it said he destroyed the angels and he spared them not, nor did he spare the old world. So if the lesson tonight is mercy for ignorance, my question to you is why didn't he spare the angels that he cast down the Sheol, commonly called hell, and why did not why he didn't spare the old world except for Noah and his sons? Quick answer, somebody. Someone give me a quick answer. Why didn't he spare those angels that he cast out of heaven? And why didn't he spare the old world that lived during the time of Noah, but only spared Noah, a righteous preacher, and eight people? Why? Somebody tell me real quick. Oh, it's going to be a long night, Smart. Won't nobody give me an answer. Because the angels, they brought the sin to the world? They, they brought the sin to the world. That, that is the correct answer. They brought the sin to the world. But my question is, so that's, that's not a wrong answer. That's the right answer. They brought sin to the world. But my question is, why didn't he spare them? Who brought sin to the world? So I like that, sister. Who brought sin to the world? And why did he spare the world who was caught up in the sin that those sinful angels brought to the world? All right, Zakain, yes, sir. Um, Maria, I see it two ways. Like the angels knew better. They, they weren't, they wasn't under. You ain't got to go any further. You don't have to go any further. You don't have to go any further. <laughs> the angels did what, sir? They knew better. They, they, they weren't ignorant. They weren't ignorant. And we were. Were we, Ima? To a certain extent. To a certain extent. But it said he spared Noah, a righteous preacher. What was Noah doing for a hundred some years? Being obedient. Being educating. obedient. Educating. Educating the people. <laughs> Preaching to the people. Shaquan, I seen your hand up. What you have, my sister? I was just going to say, Shalom, I'm just going to say the same thing. He, he was being obedient and he see that the people was being wicked, but he see that there was no change made once they were warned. So they went, they was like, oh, I don't care. You know, we, nothing's going to happen to us. He could continue building his ark. He's crazy. You know, it's nothing that's going to happen to us because it haven't happened yet and it took so long to happen. So the same way. So now here's the thing. The same way they was talking about Noah today, how some of your family, friends, and loved ones talking about you who seem crazy when you study so long on Saturday. <laughs> yes. Friday night. yes. You telling them not eat that pork. And you keep telling them what's idolatry and not, right? Zakane, yes. Zakane, finish, finish your thoughts, sir. Finish your thoughts, Zakane. I seen your hand up. Come, Maureen. And the second part of that is the old world, as I was going to say, they, they, the grace ran out. Um, their, their ignorance had an expiration date. The grace ran out. The grace ran out. Why? Because it goes back to the same thing. Because they knew. They knew better. After Noah was telling them things, and some of them just knew anyway, because they knew from the creation that there was a creator, and they knew the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness, they willingly gave in to the sinful nature, and they did not want to stay, what, rooted in the way of Yah. So they knew. So why is that so important to us today? And for when people are telling people that the Old Testament is done away with, when the New Testament itself is referring to the old world being destroyed for a reason? There's nothing new that? under the sun. What'd you say, Ima? There's nothing new under the sun. Y'all have not changed. The that is a warning. That is the reason why I feel it's urgent that we look at these type topics now. Sins, willful sin, or sins of ignorance. If we're sinning willfully, our grace may run out. Our mercy may run out. Because it says here that those angels he destroyed 
as well as the old world, he spared them not. Why? Because the Most High got tired of people willingly sinning. They knew better. They knew better. And I'm going to tell you today, there's a lot that's going on in the world today, regardless of the excuse that a lot of people are making now, a lot of people actually know better. And more so, forget others, what do you know better that you are not doing? Or what do we know better that we are not doing? We have to stop walking under that same umbrella of false grace that we came out of when we came away from the false doctrine that was the doctrine of grace only with no obedience. If there is something that we know that we have not started doing correct, that we know we're doing in error and are just not putting forth the effort to stop doing something, it's best that we start doing so because our grace runs out, as Desire Cain says. And once the Most High knows that you have understanding, because here's the thing, y'all always extended his mercy to those that lack knowledge and understanding. He always gave mercy to those. But Yah is the one who actually tries the hearts of men. Yah knows when you can comprehend or when he knows even when your Ruach, even if you have not read the scripture yet, he knows that you know in your spirit when something is wrong. And if you still are doing something that you know is wrong, the Most High knows that. There's no mercy for that if you continue in it and you don't repent. All right. So uh, where did you start at Kanak, y'all? Did you make it to verse eight yet? Uh, give me verse seven and eight. And delivered just like vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Oh, Sleek, uh, Sleek, uh, uh, I don't think you made it to uh, go to five, five through eight. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the unrighteous, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned with them, condemned them with the overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live unrighteous and deliver it just like vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexes his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. So hold here for a second, Aki. So now this goes into what Shah Shamar was saying. This scripture is actually a little scary when you think about it. If you are reading, when we go to school, we have reading class. And there's something called reading comprehension. When you read something, you're supposed to be able to comprehend what you read. And if you've read the Old Testament in reference to what this is talking about, and you're now reading the New Testament that's referring back to the Old Testament, and you can comprehend what you're reading, as Shai Shaman said, this should be a little scary when you read it. Because it is saying he destroyed the old world because of ungodliness, unrighteousness. He destroyed angels and cast them down into to the pits of Sheol, commonly called hell for some. And then it says here, even Sodom and Gomorrah, because of their wickedness, he destroyed that place and only saved Lot and his daughters who made it out. And it says here that Lot was vexed because of the unlawfulness that was taking place because the wickedness that's going on around them. Now, yes, we should be humble family and we should be meek and we should be compassionate with how we deliver the word. But in our ruach, with what we see going on around us, we should actually be vexed. We should be vexed with the manner and the level of sin and the disrespect that's going to our creator, that's going to the most high, who's given us a righteous way. So again, what does this let us know about Sodom and Gomorrah? They knew better also. Even Lot tried to warn them when they came to his house for the Malachim and the messengers. But they knew better. And just so you know, if you do a little bit of study, we go into Sodom and Gomorrah some other time. It was more than homosexuality that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. It was a lot of wickedness, a lot of abuse, a lot of unjust behavior with how they treated visitors, with the way they would rob people of their money and finances by getting unrighteous gain, Sodom and Gomorrah was a very wicked place with much unrighteous behavior. So the homosexuality was not the only sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. It was the many sins that was in Sodom and Gomorrah. However, today, what are we looking at? If the word tells us in the New Testament that the days before the end that's gonna near us 
or some of the things we need to start watching for is things are going to start going back to the days of what? It's going to start going back to like the days of Noah. So if it's telling us that in the New Testament, we need to go to the Old Testament to understand what was it like in those times. It was wicked. Everyone doing what they wanted to do, not submitting to the will of the Most High. So the angels were destroyed because they knew better when they brought that sin to the earth. They introduced to man something that the Most High did not sanction or ordain them to teach man. Man learned those ways which they knew better than, but they learned them as Eve, when she was in the garden, was tempted by the adversary. The Most High already gave instructions. See, we know our father. Our father is one that gives us very clear instructions. But the adversary is the one that introduces another way to us. And once we have the introduction of another way, we tend to bear off away from the Most High and we go to the way of the adversary. And once you know better and then you go away from knowing what is right and you go to the left, that is not ignorance. That is rebellion. That is willful. That is disrespect. Let's drop this, Kanak, y'all. So um, verse 8, I'm going to read it one more time. It says, for that righteous man dwelling among them in sin and caring vex his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Verse 9, Kanak. The master knows how to deliver the righteous out of temptations and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. So it says the master or Adonai know of how to deliver the Elohim like or commonly called the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. This is New Testament writing, Mr. Bukai. That's why I say always see what's not actually said here. When you're reading it, when you edify it to people that feel like we're just under grace and we don't have to live righteousness, what does this mean that the, uh, he's going to deliver or he knows how to deliver his righteous ones and he's going to hold the unjust for the day of judgment to be punished? We must know the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness. Where is righteousness and unrighteousness written? In the book of what? Deuteronomy 6, it said, Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. You shall love Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart, soul, and might. These commandments would I command you, this day shall be in thine heart. You shall teach them diligently unto thy children. Teach them his commandments. And then when you drop down to the 24th chapter, a 24th verse of chapter 6, it says, And this is your righteousness, that you keep the commandments. So keeping the commandments is righteousness. Breaking the commandments is unrighteousness. All right? Let's drop that, Kanak, y'all. Let's go to Jonah chapter 1. We're going to the book of Jonah chapter 1. And give me verse 1 and 2. Now the word of Yah came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. So stop here. So what do we know about Nineveh? It was wicked. What are we seeing here that has happened? The Most High, the word of the Most High came unto Jonah and told him what? Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it for their wickedness is come up before me. So after people get so wicked, the Most High sends messengers to places, to people, to warn them of their behavior. So we know that when Jonah went to Nineveh, we're not going to read the whole story now because I know some of you know it. So I'm going to give the summarized version. We know Jonah did not want to go. He did not want to go to the wicked people. But the Most High sent him there and told him that what? Their wickedness have come before me. I'm going to destroy this place. What did a leadership in Nineveh do? He proclaimed the fast. He told every man, woman, and child, and every animal, we're going to fast. And they repented, and they prayed, and they asked for mercy. And what did the Most High do for them? He delivered that place. But the point I'm bringing out is, the Most High is very merciful, 
But when a person is in ignorance, the most high will send a messenger to warn people when they're in their sin. Now, if a person rejects the warning of the most high, and what do we know about Ninevites? Ninevites were not even what? Israelites. So all mankind has an opportunity and a chance and the Most High sends his word to all mankind to tell them to repent of wickedness. All sons of Adam have an opportunity to repent. But whenever their free will takes them to, into too much wickedness to the Most High, like, now they done took that too far, he sends a warning. But if they would hear the warning, he will be merciful unto them. But if they reject the warning, then the Most High will bring forth judgment. But in this case, we know that he sent Jonah to Nineveh to witness to Nineveh of their wickedness and gave them one of the, in, in so many days time, the old is coming to destroy this place. They humbled themselves, fasted and prayed and repented for a time. And the, uh, the destruction of the most high was held back off Nineveh at that time because they did what? Change their behavior or acknowledge the messenger of the most high and the warning of the most high. And they humbled themselves and changed. All right. Why are we going here? Still mercy for ignorance. So if someone is ignorantly doing something, the most high is merciful. He gives us opportunity. But if we are willfully just remaining in nonsense, the most high will deal with us in a very harsh manner. And that we do not want. Let's move to the book of Romans chapter two, Kanak. Romans chapter two. And jump right to verse four. Uh, 14. No, start with uh, verse 12. Romans 2, verse 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before the end, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Okay, so I want to focus on verse 13. For not the hearers of the law, for not the hearers of the law are just before Elohim. But the doers of the law or the doers of the Torah shall be justified. So, brothers and sisters, imams and elders, you know, in our walk, what we need to stop doing is judging others and just make sure that we be in a light as what we've been trying to be at True Light. When we say let's not be judgmental of others and their belief, but let us learn, let us be transformed to be renewed in our mind and our ruach. And let us walk righteously before people in the spirit of love that we may lead them to the most high by the ruach or the spirit that they see dwelling upon us and not being those judgmental because we've come away from certain things and we're judging them. But we show by example, the loving, caring nature that the most high has raised us to be, the humility and our caring concern, as well as our honor to the most high. Those things should bring people to the most high by how we walk our walk. Not by how we tell them how wrong or how wicked their way is. Why am I saying that? For not the hearers of the Torah are just before Elohim, but the doers of the Torah shall be justified. So one thing that we do in the Hebrew Israelite community, Torah-based community, uh, Sabbath assembly communities, is we read from the commandments of the Most High regularly. That is our custom. So while so many people are judging people that are still in the church that may still be ignorant because they're being misled, they may have a better chance than some of us who are actually learning the word and know what the word says and is still not applying it to our life. You can talk about somebody still eating pork and most of forbid anybody on this line is doing this and you still commit adultery. You can talk about somebody keeping the wrong Sabbath day and you still disrespect your parents. You're not honoring your father and your mother. Sitting in a Sabbath service, hearing the word of Elohim being spoken 
and saying hallelujah because the message was good means absolutely nothing to us unless we're going to be what? Doers of the word. It said the hearers are not justified because we're present, because we're hearing, and because we're reading. If we're reading, comprehending, and understanding, and not applying, it profits us nothing. If we are hearing, comprehending, and understanding, and not applying, it profits us nothing. It says that the doers shall be justified. So when we hear or read and understand the word of Elohim or God, then we have an obligation to show our faith by works. Faith is an action that will be shown by a work. All right? So it says, for when the Gentiles which have not the Torah or the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. So going back to Nineveh for a time and going back to just other Gentile nations, it's saying when the Gentiles do by nature the things that are written in the law, meaning this, they have not yet received the direct law being taught to them as Israel has but yet they still know not to mess with someone's wife because that's wrong. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Gentiles, even before, even this country that we live in, this country that we live in, there used to be a law against homosexuality and being, being open and walking around like that, which meant they knew better at a time whether they knew the word of the most high or not. Naturally, by nature, in order for us to reproduce, it takes a male with a female. That is rather human or animal. So by nature, mankind knows that it is right for man to be with woman and it is not profitable or it's not natural or not lawful for a man to be with a man. But they changed that law. So now, when they were doing it naturally by nature, the Most High would still look upon them with mercy in some other areas, because at least they're doing this right, they're doing that right. But when they corrupt themselves, and like we seen when we read earlier in Peter, now that there are people that's coming to teach them damnable heresies, their destructive ways is now leading others to the path of destruction, because there are people who now, regardless if they've ever been to church or ever opened the Bible, they know that that lifestyle is wrong. But because the law has now been passed and none of us can actually speak against it, well, you know I'm going to speak against it, but what I'm saying is publicly, politically, if you say something, you're not correct and they will come for you now. But the Gentiles who naturally know that this is wrong they're doers of the word because they know better. I'm going to tell you when I work, when you go into older people, older people's homes, they always get on a conversation about how wicked the world is. And I don't even know their religious backgrounds. And I talk to many different nationalities. When I go into an older person's home, many different nationalities, when I'm working throughout the course of a week, I have at least one conversation with some elder person that is so frustrated with what's going on in the world today and it's not right. When I was in the hospital with my father, the nurse came over to me. Now my father is 70 some years old. The nurse came to me and said, uh, uh, what's your relationship? I said, son, she said, oh, I had to ask. I'm like, what do you mean you had to ask? She's like, because today you got to be safe with how you ask because I asked somebody before, like, are you the son? And they got upset because they were actually together. And so you have people that's walking on eggshells, not being able to respond to people a certain way, even in professional fields, because naturally most people know that that's wrong. But society has made it acceptable. But back to the main point, it said, the hearers of the word shall not be justified, but the doers of the word shall be justified. So what are hearers of the word? Someone that has heard the word, someone that understands the word. So if a hearer of the word, 
does not do the word, what does that let you know the most how it do to a person that hears the word, comprehends the word, and doesn't do it? What happens to that individual? Somebody help me out. Shashamar. Yeah, he will punish you but spare your life, or in the worst case scenario, he might take your life. He could punish you and spare your life. Worst case scenario, he can take your life, right? Because we just read that he will hold the unjust for the day of judgment. Yes, sir, you hear me? Y'all, what you have, Akeem? Well, I was going to say that um, he's going to make your life worse and worse and worse. Um, like in the curses, how it speak about the iron over your head. Um, basically, it's like a rubber band that's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter each time you mess up and you know what you're doing. He's going to make it tighter. You know, in some cases, he's going to do that. Or in other cases, he's just going to just, you know, he's just going to pass judgment on your behind. All right. So it make your life worse and worse or things will come upon you, such as disease, sickness, uh, uh, loss of life. All types of things will come upon you for those behaviors. Thank you, Adon. All right. So real quick, can I, let's uh, jump to book of Acts chapter 14. Book of Acts. Fourteen and start at uh, eleven. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, "The gods will come down to us in the likeness of men." And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. Which when the disciples Barnabas and Paul heard of, it, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out. And saying, sirs, why do you do these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living Elohim, which made heaven and earth and sea and all things that are therein. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness. And that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and, fruit, and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people, and they had not done sacrifice unto them. All right. So we see here that one thing is, is Paul and Barnabas, of course, you know, the Most High was using them. And so when the people seen the works that they was doing, you know, one thing that mankind has a habit of doing is wanting to worship man more than the creator himself. Right. So when they seen these things, it says, and when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices saying in the speech of Laconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercius because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city. So basically what we see here is they're now Paul and Barnabas, they're doing whatever they're doing and the mighty works that they're doing in one name and one name only. The name of the one creator who is Yah. These people have now seen the works of Yah being done in their midst by these men. And they see the gods have come down in the flesh and they call them by the name of Jupiter and Mercury. And then they want to make sacrifice under Paul and Barnabas which when Paul and Barnabas heard, they rent or they tore their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying, sirs, why do you do these things? 
We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living Elohim, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered or allowed nations to walk in their own ways. Sirs, what are you doing? Please stop. We have been sent here to teach you better, to call you away from these vanities, who in times past you did not know the true and living Elohim, but we're not here to proclaim our name. We're not here to esteem Jupiter or Mercury. We're not them. That is falsehood. We're here to tell you to stop that way of worship. Well, Maurice Samak, where are you going? Why, why are we here? Why are we going to this, this topic tonight? Because it's mercy for ignorance. These people was ignorant to the way of Yah. And as a man of Yah, we're supposed to teach people the way of Yah. So when someone is in ignorance, the Most High sends his messengers to those who are in ignorance. And my brothers and sisters, if we are servants of the Most High, we have a duty to do also. Y'all been hearing me teach for the past, I don't know how many months. We should not let people be comfortable in their sin around us. We should not be supportive of their sin. We shouldn't comfort them in their sin. Now, I'm not saying that we deliver our message in the wrong way, but we should not be partaking or making things accessible to them to remain in that sin. We have to call it out because we are the light. We are the sent ones that are sent to tell people that's not the way it's unpleasing to the most high. You must stop this behavior. And I tell you this because I love you. You can't continue to embrace idolatry and think it's okay with y'all. It's not okay with y'all. I'm like, Joan, I'm vexed when I see your Christmas tree. I'm vexed with your swine. You want to know why we got blood, high blood pressure, diabetes, hypertension? Because we're breaking the dietary law the most high. And as it had been when I have family functions, when they wanted me to pray, I cannot bless unclean food. So I would say purposely for the sake of edification to the people, most high, will you please bless the food which is clean to be consumed and please have mercy on my family who in ignorance are still eating abominations that is not food. I would say it as nice as possible, but I still wanted them to hear, I'm not blessing y'all stuff, I can't. The church has taught you that I can't stand here as a representative of the Most High. And if I love you, I can't keep standing here, let you smoke cigarettes, and I'm not trying to help you stop smoking them cigarettes. I don't buy, and I've never, all praise be to the Most High, brought anyone a pack of cigarettes. Are you going to the store? Yes. Will you bring me a pack of cigarettes back? No. I don't buy cigarettes. You going to the grocery store? Yes. Will you give me a pack of pork chops? No. I will not purchase unclean food to bring it. If you're going to get it, you got to go get it on your own time, but I can't be supportive of that. I'm sent before you as an Ish Elohim or man of Elohim or man of God to be a light unto you with love and compassion and mercy. And the way y'all hear me delivering it now, y'all know I just have compassion when I speak on class, but I say it to them in a very nice way. And I try to be as informative as possible, but I'm not going to bless that food. And you definitely can't have it in my house. So we have it in any gathering. You know you can't bring that mess up in my house. We're not having it. That's what Paul and them was doing. They ran back in that. What are y'all doing? Stop. We have been sent to tell y'all to stop this. So as the word says, time and chance happens to every man. We have a duty, Mishmachah, to be a light. We're called to be servants. And the most high winks at our ignorance. But once you tell a person that something is unclean and you show them in the word of the most high that it's unclean and they continue to do it, that is not rebellion. 
and that's between them and y'all. You don't try to make them do it. You just let them know that it's wrong. So Paul and Barnabas said, what are y'all doing? Do you not know the most high is the living power, the living Elohim? These are false gods. These are false idols. And the most high hates when we give credit and honor to anything or anyone besides him. By y'all referencing us as Jupiter and Mercury, that is disrespectful. The most high says, have no other Elohim before your face. But in your ignorance, the most high winked that. Because he gave all nations of the sons of Adam a little liberty to live their life and to do naturally the things, the just things, such as don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Those are some natural things that everyone should just basically know. Now, maybe they didn't know the dietary. They didn't know the true living power because we've seen before where Paul said he was going to make known to someone the true most high. And that's what we're supposed to be doing letting it be known who the true most high is and not letting anyone call on before us any false ones. Verse 16, can I, one more time. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Read on. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness. So who in times past, that word there for suffered, just like here as well as in the Old Testament, it's really going to mean who allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, nevertheless, he let not himself without witness in that he did good. I'm letting them walk in their own ways because the oracles and the law, statutes, and commandments was given to Israel. Israel was supposed to be a nation of priests. The whole reason for Israel, Israel, you are my peculiar people. You are my peculiar treasure. I taught you the laws. So for that time where I was raising you up and training you to be the priest, you were going to be a priest to the nations. So there are things they were doing in error that the Most High in their ignorance was winking at or allowing because he was allowing the nations to do their thing because his nation was Israel. And Israel was told and instructed never to take on the customs of the nations. Why? Because Israel was supposed to be sent to the nations to teach them of the true and living Elohim or the true and living God or power whose name is Yah. So that's the duty of an Israelite is to be ready to proclaim the true way and the true name of the Most High. All right, let's drop that Kanak down. Let's go to Yahukanon, commonly called John, chapter 15. And jump right to verse 22. John 15, verse 22. Let's get a little bit more of the thought. Start at verse 18 for me. Verse 18, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I have said unto you. The servant is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not sent. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not sinned. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. So hold him for a second. So here's one of those interactive moments. Uh, what are y'all getting out of those verses? I'll take about the first three people and you got about like a 60 second uh, time frame. Uh, the first three people that raise their hands can give me what they're getting out of those scriptures we just read. Yahuganan of John chapter 15 started at verse 18 and he stopped at verse uh, 24. What are you getting out of that? I'll give you a moment just to kind of read back over it for yourself. 
And once you read it, I'm, I'm gonna pause for a few moments to give everybody a chance to glance over it. And only the first three, if anyone would like to share, what are you getting out of that? Okay, Zakane Yaquab, the floor is yours, sir. Tom Murray. Um, what I'm getting from this is that um, <clears throat> Hamashiach is, is kind of encouraging the disciples um, that they're going to hate, um, they're going to be hated on for telling the truth, you know, but but the, the truth has to be told or else really you can't, you can't judge them in the, in the ignorance. It's kind of like what it's saying. They, they got it. They, 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 they have to be told the truth. Um, you know, but just be encouraged that they're going to reject you, just like you know, just like they hated me and they and and they hate hate my father, you know, for for rebuking them. All right. So the Mashiach was preparing his Talmudim or his students for what? When you go ahead and start ministering to the people, then you're going to do what? You're going to be hated. Why? Because you're coming to them with truth that they're not going to want to hear. And so they hated me, they hated the father, so therefore they're gonna hate you also. Thank you, Zakane. And uh, I'm gonna get uh, Zakane Eliyahu, who's gonna be the last one. So Shah Shamar, uh, you can go first, and then Ima Shoshana, and then Zakane Eliyahu. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all those because those are elders. So go ahead, uh, Shah Shamar. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, I agree with um, Zakane Yaku. I've said, yeah, you definitely have to um, you know, develop a thick skin when you're in a walk because. You know, even if you're in the world, you're going to have people that are going to hate you. But when you're in the truth, you know, even more people are going to hate you. Um, but a point that I want to bring out was uh, verse 22. Uh, I'm just going to read it again. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Hmm. I thought that was interesting because basically since he spoke to them, there's nothing that they can use, you know, to cover their sin, you know, so it's basically going back to what, you know, what we were talking about, uh, you know, being in ignorance and sin, and then also, you know, after you come to the knowledge of your sin, you know, you really don't have anything to say, I yield. Bullseye, that was a good pull, Aki, good pull, bullseye, I'm gonna touch on that again in a moment, bullseye, hallelujah. All right, Ima Shoshana, the floor is yours. You cannot let the world dictate to you what the Father has already revealed to you that you know to do and to do right because you're going to be persecuted just like they were persecuted. You have to live righteously before man so they can see the works of the Father in you to know that you are determined to do the will of the Father and not for yourself or for the world, but for the esteem of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Zakain Eliyahu, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, the floor is yours. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpacham. Um, Shah Shamar uh, <laughs> hit it spot on uh, one of the things that I was going to say, but I'll just land back on what he was saying because the word has come forth and the signs in which Mashiach did uh, evidence themselves as to who sent him and who he is. And yes, indeed, there is no cloak any longer. Therefore, now if you don't adhere, you will be judged. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm gonna go back just to the point. And this is for, uh, for my brothers and sisters. I want us to hear this part really good because sometimes in the walk, it can be very discouraging. Um, you know, I know when I came in many years ago, uh, when you're the only one, like you start to look at this being strange and uh, sometimes your friends don't really want you around and things like that because they all you want to do is talk out of the Bible. Things in life start to change, especially before you have a mishpaka or a family or like-minded uh, believers to fellowship with. So you kind of become alienated. So it says, if the world hates you, Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love you, would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. To my brothers and sisters, especially those of you who are newer in the walk, if things are starting to get a little rough for you with the way people are treating you and coming against you, 
Just understand that you have been chosen and called out of the world. The world loves its own and it hates anyone that's chosen of Yah. And the time that we're living in, the climate that we're living in, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and darkness in high places. And the thing is, it's not even that people have something against you per se. Sometimes they don't even know why they stop liking you or why they stop liking us. It's just something about you rubbing them wrong now. So now they're mistreating you. Why? But the word is let, should let you know why this is happening. There's a different ruach in you than that's in them. The ruach or the spirit of the world hates the spirit of Yah. And if the ruach is dwelling within you because you have been chosen and called out and you live in upright and you're standing against that which the world wants to do, the world will hate you. And as one of my elders told me a long time ago, if everybody love you, it's because you ain't saying, no, he said, if everybody like you, it's because you ain't saying nothing. When you start saying something, you're going to know it because you're going to have people not like you and they're going to come against you. But as long as you're saying stuff that everybody want to hear and letting them do whatever they want to do that's wrong, yeah, everybody's going to love you. But when you start saying something, you're going to know. The point is this, uh, brothers and sisters. We cannot allow the world or worldly people to remain worldly around us. We don't judge, but again, we don't comfort you in your sin. That's wrong, and you can't do that around me. Or I'm not coming around you if this is going on because I cannot partake, nor will I be around anything unrighteous like this. Because I love y'all first and foremost, and also because I love you. If I'm around you allowing this to go on and comforting you in it, I'm a crutch. We're going to be hated sometime, and that's the reason why we are sometimes like an outcast and that's why we hear about it when we get together on Shabbat, we be so excited because like, whoo, a breath of fresh air. We have somebody that understands me. You hear Kiara, oh, I'm so thankful I got somebody to share my thoughts with. They don't think I'm crazy. Praising Yah. Why should we have to feel ashamed to praise Yah? We shouldn't. But because the world does not understand who Yah is, we can't even praise him properly in front of them. So we be looking so forward to Shabbat. Now, let me get back to the main point. So the world is going to hate the representatives of the Most High who has been called out. And we are the chosen called out ones. Blessed be the name of Yah. Praise his set apart name. Going to what Zakane, uh, Eliyahu, and Shashamar just went to, 22. Uh, no, what, what I want. Yeah, 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not they had, not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. The Messiah basically said, if I never came to them, they wouldn't really know their sin. But now that I've come, they have no cloak, no covering, nothing to hide their sin. It's exposed. I'm going to heal you, but go and sin no more. I could have stoned you for that adultery, but go and sin no more. So if we have reading comprehension skills, for those that want to say that laws are done away with, we see that the Messiah, as it says in the book of Matthews, the first chapter, she shall bring forth a son and shall call him Yahushua, Yahoshua, Yahshua, whichever dialect one's familiar with, which is Yah is salvation, for he shall do what? Save his people from their sin. He didn't come die for your sin for you to continue in sin. He came to tell you this is wrong. Don't do it anymore. I'm going to deliver you and I'm going to take that with me when I go. But don't you continue to do that mess. Now you know why you were sick. The sin you was in caused that sickness. The reason why those men want to stone you, because according to the law, you know you shouldn't have been committing no adultery. But here's the mercy and grace of the Father from heaven. I forgive you. You are forgiven, but go and sin no more. You knew better when you was doing it, but I'm letting you now know also. It's wrong. You knew it was wrong, but I'm going to be merciful. Now go and don't do that mess anymore. Those are the words of the Messiah, of Mashiach. So if we go back to the start of this lesson, 
when we talk about damnable heresies that they're going to be teaching, leading people to destruction, all you got to do is believe in the name of Jesus and you should be saved. When the Messiah, the Hebrew Messiah himself said that had he, since he come, before he came, they didn't really have knowledge of their sin, but now that he's present and he's come to them, he had to come. There's no more cloak or covering for their sin because they know better and I've taught it to them and they know they should not continue in that mess. Meaning, I winked in ignorance, but I educated and I made disciples. I sent taught ones out to teach you the way. So now there's no excuse. Let's drop that knock, y'all. And I got to speed up because I want to get to one more portion. Um, let's go to jump to Acts 17 for me real quick. And it's going to be the close of this segment for the night. And I'm, we're going to jump back to the uh, scheduled reading. Jump to Acts 17. Verse 30. Sneaker, I try to I try to cut it short, but I don't like when I have to do that sometimes. Let's before we go to Acts uh uh 17, um jump to uh uh Yahubana 9 verse 40. John 9 and 40. John 9 verse 40. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Yahusha said unto them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remaineth. So uh, let me jump back up to verse uh, 39. And Yahusha said, For judgment, I am come into this world that they which see not might see. And they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? Yahusha said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. So the Mashiach is basically saying, He's coming to the world for judgment's sake. That they might, that they would see not might see. So those who are blind and does not see that are ignorant to what they're doing may see what they're doing in error that's against the most high. He's come to magnify the Torah, to make it enjoyable, to explain it. And they that would see might be made blind. So there are some that already see that they might be made blind. And we know he's referencing here the Pharisees and Sadducees. There are people that already knew the laws, but still weren't actually keeping the law based upon what they knew. And so some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? Yeah, who shall say it unto them? If you were blind, you should have no sin. <laughs> you should have no sin. But now you say we see Therefore, you, your sin remaineth. See, y'all have been right here judging everything that I've done. You think you know everything, and you say you see. Um, you know how the Pharisees were talking about the different people that Mashiach sat with. Why does he sit with these sinners? They knew so much. They thought they already had it all together. So since you already know what it says do and you're not doing it, you're going to be judged. I'm making you blind now. But to those who did not know, praise be to the most high, for we who are on this call who were once blind to the truth of the most high, our eyes have been opened by the Ruach HaKodesh to see the true way, to see the true path, to walk and follow the true light who was sent in the flesh from Elohim, from heaven, to teach and to deliver, to teach men their sins, transgressions, and iniquities, and to deliver or to free us from it. 
to cause us to see and the desire to want to serve the Most High in spirit and in truth. Praise be to the Most High for his set-apart example in which he sent for us to follow. Jump to Acts 17 and 30, come out. Acts 17, verse 30. In the times of this ignorance, Aline winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So here's the point. So we've seen where the Mashiach came to people so that he can educate them on what they were doing wrong. We see here, it says that in the times of ignorance, Elohim winked. We read already that it said that the Gentiles, there was a time when the Most High allowed them to kind of do what they were doing, but then he sent his messages to them. As we had the example of Nineveh, as we had the example with uh, Paul and Barnabas, just to give a couple of precept references, the Most High still sent his servants to the sons of Adam, not Israel only, but also to the other nations to teach them the truth and who the true living Elohim is. And so when they were in ignorance, the Most High winked. But once the knowledge of the Most High has been revealed to someone, Ignorance is no longer a thing we can walk under. And at the times of this ignorance, Elohim or God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So we already covered last week that sin is a transgression of the law. The Most High said that he was going to keep the unjust for the day of judgment to punish them but it's going to preserve and protect the righteous. Righteousness is keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High as written in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is our righteousness always that we keep his commandments. He said he winks in our ignorance, but the time for winking is up once we have the knowledge of the truth. And once we have the knowledge of the truth, the Most High commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So Mishpachah, in closing of this segment, what is mercy for ignorance? Mercy for ignorance is, as we've already covered, the most highest merciful to those who does not have a clue what they're doing in error. And even we who are walking and trying to keep Torah, there's still some things that we're doing in ignorance because we do not fully understand all his commandments ourselves. Therefore, the mercy of the Most High, he has mercy on us in our ignorance and he winks at the things that we don't understand and he know we don't understand them. However, when he sent a messenger, when he's giving you a ruach of understanding or a spirit of understanding what you read or he giving you uh, the sermon of what you read and you can understand it says this and you just don't do it. There's no mercy for that. The mercy is for the things that you start reading in the scripts and you feel like, wow, I thought I was doing this right. But I still realize I've been missing this part. I've been doing it wrong. And the most high is just and merciful and his mercy endures forever. But his mercy is for ignorance. His mercy is not for willful, promiscuous, abominable sins. When are we no longer ignorant? Once we have knowledge and understanding and comprehension of the scripture. Thou shalt not steal. I believe we all can comprehend that clearly. If it's not yours, don't take it. If you're stealing, you already comprehend that. So when are we no longer considered ignorant? When you understand what it says and what it means. We can't claim the ignorant card when we know better. We know we should not commit adultery. We know we should not steal. We know we should not bear false witness. We know we should keep the Shabbat set apart. We know we should honor our father and mother. So when you have knowledge of, he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they lack knowledge, right? 
because we lack knowledge, we were destroyed. But then also, he said, because they rejected knowledge. He would reject your seed, he would reject your children. So once you have the knowledge of something, and knowledge is to know, ignorance is not to not know. So once you know something, the hearers of the word are not justified, but the doers. So when are we no longer ignorant? When we know. Who are our brothers and sisters? In the book of Matthews, I didn't get all the scriptures that was entailed tonight. In the book of Matthews chapter 12, it tells you, who is my mother, brother, and sister? Those that do the will of my father who is in Shemaim. And we need to stop being ignorant to that fact as well. Who will be judged? The wicked. We've seen through the scriptures that the Malachim, from the beginning, they were judged for teaching the sin to mankind and for bringing it to the earth that were cast out of Shemaim. It says that the old world was destroyed in Noah's day. And he spared Noah only and the eight that was on the ark because he was a preacher of righteousness, but everybody else died. Why? Because they knew better. They had knowledge of this man prophesied or he preached to them for years and they rejected the word of Elohim. So who shall be judged? As it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, we read, and it said he did not spare Sodom and Gomorrah, only Lot, the righteous, who was disgusted with all that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. He spared him and his daughters, and he burnt and destroyed everybody else in Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because they knew better. They rejected the knowledge of truth. They knew what wickedness was. So Mishpachah, let us, it says what was written before time was written for our learning. Let us learn from the righteousness of our forefathers who was righteous. And let us also learn from the wickedness and what happened to those who were wicked in time past so that we do not continue to follow after their ways. With that, I pray and I hope everyone got some understanding of this portion. Let's now jump back to our scheduled reading. I'm not gonna get all of it, but I just want to tie something in for where we are. Let's go to uh, 2 Kings, um, Kanaka, 2 Kings, I'm transitioning slightly. Second Kings chapter 13, Adon. We've covered part of this with our reading um, uh, about three weeks back, but I want to jump back in to Second Kings chapter 13, start with verse one. In the three and 20th year of Joash, son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned 17 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yah and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebai, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. And the anger of Yah was kindled against Israel. And he delivered him to the hand of Haziel, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Haziel, all their days. And Jehovah has besought Yah, and Yah hearkened unto him. For he saw the oppression of Israel, because the king of Syria oppressed them. And Yah gave Israel a savior, so that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians. And the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. Okay, so let's stop here. So as we've been covering in our reading of the book of the kings, that the kings would either be righteous or there will be wicked. There will be those that will follow the righteous path. And then there were so many that would always go back to the ways of old. So we see here, it says, uh, in the 320th year of Joaz, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Joaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned 17 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of Yah and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin, he departed not therefrom. How is this our scheduled reading that we've been reading in the book of Kings tying in with our lesson on willful or sins of ignorance? 
Because these kings knew the way of Yah. They had a choice to either serve Yah or to return to the customs that their forefathers established. And as we read in the Brick Kadashah, it said that there was prophets in those times, false prophets, those that would teach lies and damnable heresies and doctrines that led people to destruction. So we see here that these kings, a lot of the times, went back after the ways of their forefathers, after these lies, and he said he followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel the sin, and he parted not therefrom. And the anger of Yah was kindled against Israel, and he delivered them into the hand of Haziel, king of Syria, and into the hand of Benadad, the son of Haziel, all their days. This ties in with what Shashamar and Yermiah said. When you are in your sin, willfully, and you do not turn away from those sins, the Most High is either going to punish you and punish you really bad, or he's going to eventually take your life. So because this king returned back to the evils of the forefathers of the sins of Jeroboam, the Most High sent another king, a king of Syria, to take him. And Jehoaz besought Yahuwah, and Yah hearkened unto him, for he saw the oppression of Israel because the king of Syria oppressed them. Now, yes, the king of Syria oppressed them, but why did the king of Syria oppress them? Because the Most High's anger was against them, and he allowed the king of Syria to oppress them. So a lot of times when people's going through something and they're calling on, oh God, oh God, please, oh God, please. What they have to understand a lot of times it, it is the most high himself who has put them in the condition that they're in because of some sin. And he normally sends a messenger or someone to warn or to show us these things to give us an opportunity to repent. So when Joy has besought y'all, Yah hearkened unto him, for he saw the oppression of Israel because the king of Syria oppressed them. And Yah gave Israel a savior so that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians and the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. So we see here, Yah sent them a savior. The root word for that word there for savior is Yeshua, which is 83467. But what's actually written there in the Hebrew is Moshiach. Yah sent them a Moshiach. He sent them a savior. So I do know, and I'm not trying to be uh, uh, starting any debate, but there are people that has an issue with believing in the Messiah as a savior because they say there's only one savior. We know what Isaiah says. I say it all the time. There's only one savior, that is Yah. However, Yah is the power, the creator of heaven and earth and all that in them is. So if he calls a man a savior, so is he. The Most High has always sent saviors in the flesh to deliver Israel from under the hand of sin and from persecution. So it said he delivered them from under the hand of the Syrians and the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. Verse 6, can I y'all get that for me? Nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who made Israel sin, but walked therein. And there remained the grove also in Samaria. Neither did he leave of the people to Joahaz, but 50 horsemen, and 10 chariots, and 10,000 footmen, Okay, so we're going we're gonna to drop this portion. So basically, after the Most High delivered them, what did they do? Nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who made Israel sin, but walked therein, and there remained the grove of Asherah, also in Samaria. So the Most High continually delivered Israel, but Israel continued to hold on to sin, willingly and willfully. Jump to chapter 14. Take it from the top.
in the second year of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, reigned Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah. He was 25 years old when he began to reign and reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jordan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of Yah. Yet not like Dawid his father. He did according to all things that Joash his father did. Howbeit the high places were not taken away. As yet the people did sacrifice and burnt incense on the high places. Hold here for a second. So it says, he did that which is right in the sight of Yah, yet not like David, his father, which is talking about King David. He did according to all the things of Joash, his father did. So he did some right in the sight of Yah, but not as David. He wasn't as righteous as David. Howbeit the high places were not taken away as yet the people did sacrifice and burn incense on the high places. So as we read in the Brick Kadashah, Paul and Barnabas, when they were with those people, when they was now wanting to sacrifice to Jupiter and Mercus, Mer Mer Mercury, and they were calling Paul and Barnabas these, and they wanted to do a sacrifice, they went in, and they went, in, men, sirs, what are you doing? Stop that. This is the same thing that they were supposed to do here. They were supposed to tear these high places down that did not get torn down. So that still allowed people to have a place to sacrifice unto these idols. Verse five, and it came to pass as soon as the kingdom was confirmed in his hand that he slew his servants, which had slain the king his father. Get verse six for me, Kanak, and I'm going to end it there. But the children of the murderers he slew not, according to that which was written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein Yah commanded, saying, the father shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children be put to death for the fathers, but every man shall be put to death for his own sin. All right, hallelujah. So, um, so we see that because he did not tear down those places, the high places were still established. And as we was covering, um, as we've been going into this topic, we've seen several kings that were still righteous, but they still never tore down the high places. And those high places left a residue or a remnant there for the people to continue to return to those false idols. That's the reason why the Most High would always say, tear them down, tear down these idols destroy them, do away with them. Why? So that the people will not return to them. And that's the same thing we're supposed to be doing today. We're supposed to be trying to help people refrain from idols. Not being supportive of the idols, not trying to find the innocence or the good gesture that's going on around the idol we're supposed to do away with everything that has nothing to do with the Most High to establish away the Most High, because if not, what happens? The people will somewhat serve Yah, but always return back to offer a sacrifice to the idol. That's why we must destroy it. It says, but the murders he slew not, but the murders he slew, the children of the murders he slew not, according to that which was written in the law, but every man should be put to death for his own sin. I'm going to end on that note. Every man should be put to death with his own sin. It's going to be the last scripture. So here is something that we all know. The wages of sin is death, and every man should be put to death for his own sin. The beauty of the scripture is this, and the beauty of our father is he does wink at us in our ignorance. And when you go back to the book of Romans, it said those, they who are without law, died without law. So what does that mean? It means that there are some people that might not have had a chance to hear as many laws as we have heard. But if by nature they was doing the things that was written in the law, it is our hopes that the Most High is merciful unto them because they did right basically with the things that they knew. See, on this side, we got brothers that can tell you, oh, you shouldn't eat pork. And can tell you how all the holidays are wrong, which they are. Christmas is dealing with false god and paganism. New Year's is dealing with the god of Janus, which is talking about these portals, so we should not be celebrating that. It's wrong, but that should be the main thing we're known for teaching people. 
See, brothers can do all that, but there are some elders that have passed who loved their wife and didn't commit adultery, who took care of their children and didn't abandon their home and was a father to his family, who knew God and did not know him by his name, Yah, did not know any Hebrew. but would help a neighbor's family, a neighboring family that was destitute of food because they had community in the old times. There was elders who have already passed that would have not allowed a sissy to walk up and down a neighborhood feeling like that is okay. There are those who, when a young girl did something that was not honorable from what some of the elders have told me, was you will see a child be sent away from the community so that the other children does not see some little pregnant little girl that's right here being fast, that's not pregnant. They were sent away to be hidden because we don't want that sin to spread through the community. So naturally they knew that premarital sex and fornication was sin. They spoke highly against that. They knew marriage was honorable and all, whether they knew the scripture or not. They knew to honor their father and mother, whether they knew the word or not. And you do know that a lot of them were slaves that could not read. But their spirit or their ruach was a whole lot better than a lot of people that know the laws today. So when it says they who are without law, die without law, that's kind of twofold. But one of them is this. If a person didn't know the law, and they die before the Most High has awakened us as we are now in the United States of America. This truth has now been awakened in us. The sons and daughters are now prophesying. The Ruach is now upon people. We have the word. And the understanding of the word all oh, praise be to the Most High. There are some people that passed that still kept more laws than some people that are hearers of the word today that are not doing it. If we died our sin, every man and woman and child that grows to the age of adult and grows to a certain age is accountable for sin. And there's also a great lesson that Maury Dawood did last night on gift that for the children that wasn't able to listen in, I want them to go back and listen in to because it talks a lot about children and children's behaviors also. The wages of sin is death. If we are ignorant, the most high winks. But if we know better, the most high expects us to do better. And all through his word, line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, we see that he gives us an example all the way from the old throughout the New Testament of his mercy, which endures forever. With that, I pray and I hope everyone got some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The reason why I think we do need to start going to some of these type teachings is because I do believe there's a line drawn in the sand in the spiritual realm. And I do believe the ceiling is now starting to take place. People are starting to be marked with the mark of Yah. And the beast is trying to continue to mark the rest of those who can mark with the mark of the beast, which we'll be talking about soon and very soon. So Mishpachah, let us not continue to walk in grace. And when I say continue to walk, not walk in grace, meaning we know that we're in error and refusing to change it. Let us stop trying to walk in that grace where, oh, the mercy I love me because I'm Israel. We've seen the most high killed a lot of Israelites. And there's nothing new under the sun. As Shashamar said, where we started in Peter, that should be a very scary scripture. Why? Because as the most high destroyed many people of old, He's going to do the same to those in our day and age when destruction comes upon this earth for those who are in willful sin. And with that, I pray that the Most High is merciful to all of us and he strengthens us and gives us the Ruach of temperance and discipline that we can repent of our sins, transgression, iniquities, and walk the straight and narrow. I pray and I hope that this word was well received tonight. I know it was not our regular schedule uh, reading, but I wanted to conclude and get to the uh, conclusion of this topic tonight. So again, if we know better, Mishpachah, we have to do better. It is time for us to stop just listening 
and just doing church. Because everybody want to talk about the church. And I know we don't consider ourselves a church, but sometimes our tendencies is no different. We come together, we have a good fellowship, but are we being renewed? Are we being converted? And with that, I say, say lie. All praise, honor, esteem be to the most high. I now open the floor to the elders and the imams. If you have any words of encouragement, any words to share uh, before I open it to the floor. Shalom again. I just like to say it was a very tough study and was very well edified and it's, it's so timely. Um, I'm not a TV person, but there are certain things I enjoy watching, but it's getting to the point where there's nothing you can watch. I, I love watching Jeopardy and there's a transvestite on Jeopardy. I love watching Wheel of Fortune and these are innocent television shows. But this week, there was a gentleman on there who had a partner that was of the same sex as he was. And we are adults. We know right from wrong. But the thing that really bothers me is the fact that our children are being exposed to these things. And there used to be a time that certain movies and things had a certain rating, and you knew after a certain hour not to allow kids to watch the television. But now, it's on daytime television. And it just infuriates me. And it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost speechless, you know? And I guess we have to get to a point where this sin bothers us. The things that the father hate, we should hate as well. So it was a very, very tobe study and very timely. Hallelujah. Thank you for your words of wisdom, Ima. Thank you for the, the passion that we just heard and what you were saying and the frustration, the vexation, because it sounds like you feel like Lot right now, Ima. So, you know, and that that's our Ruach. As we, like you said, we should start hating the things that the most high hates. And so hallelujah uh, for your uh, your testimony. And uh, uh, thank you for sharing your words of wisdom, Ima. Ima Shoshana, I see your hand on the floor. That was a very tope and time to word that said. And truly, the Father's not slack in putting us remembrance of where we are at in this time today and how we have to persevere and how we have to show the light of him in our lives before man and, and to live it and be convicted of it and to know that this is what we have to do this this if we say that we are the children of light let the light shine and be obedient and continue to do what the father tells us to do. He's keeping us in remembrance of what we're supposed to be doing. So it is a very timely word. He will constantly remind us and keep us on mark and keep us lined up with what he has for us. So I'm thankful for that word. It was a tope word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise, honesty, me to the most high. Barak, his Kodash name. Thank you for your words, wisdom as well, Iman. Toda, toda, rabba. Iman Newkirk, uh, I see your hand on the floor. The floor is yours, Iman. It's a tobe, tobe, tobe lesson. I just thank you, thank the most high for this lesson that you brought out. And it makes me feel better because a lot of stuff would upset me, just mess up my spirit. Certain things I would see and have way people be acting and the sins and stuff they were doing. So that's a tobe, tobe lesson. I thank you for that. Now I don't feel bad when I feel bad about sin. Tobe lesson. Thank you for your words as well, Iman. I think we all fall victim to sometimes how we feel about it, but you know, it just, we have a way we have to respond to people, but the way we feel about it, you know, sometimes we have to mask it a little bit, but that feeling is natural. That's, that's, that's us growing more and more in the Ruach. So praise be to Yah. Praise be to Yah for your words of wisdom always, Iman. Hallelujah. All right, Zakanim, do y'all have any words? All right, the elders don't have any. Okay, okay, Zakanim, Yaqua, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, Maury, I, I just want to land back on on the email at that um, <clears throat> Tob Tob lesson, and and me personally, I I, I think. Um, or at least I'm, I'm happy with the way these lessons are, are, are going of late. You know, I, I think it's, uh, you know, we have to, we have to really <clears throat> uh, present the truth. You know, we, we got to present the truth and not just, 
you know, uh, you or or anybody else that's teaching, but all of us as a nation, you know, once once we become aware of the truth, we can't we can't hide that under bush. We we are a nation of of priests, teachers, and we have to we have to you know, with compassion, but with truth, let 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 our brothers and sisters know um, when when they're in error. You know, the, we've been charged that through several books in the Old Testament and, and the New Testament, the, the, the Tanakh and, and the Brick Hadashai, that, that we can't hold our tongue, you know, but rebuke our brothers and sisters that, you know, they don't, we don't suffer sin upon them. So I, I, I'm pleased, I'm, I'm happy <laughs> with the way the lessons are, are, are going as of late. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your words, uh, Zakane. And uh, Mishpaka family, um, I hope everyone really heard the words that the Zakain uh, said that we, we all are responsible for carrying the word of Yah. Um, and you can't put a light under a bushel. We, we don't just come together for these studies just for our enjoyment, yeah, because we do enjoy Shabbat, but it's to better us, for us to be converted and for us to be a witness to someone. As you know, Ima Shoshana gave the short version because her testimony could be very long from all she's experienced when she was sick, her hospital stay, but she got the minister to people. She got to pray for someone. She got to be a light while in her sickness. You, you know what I'm saying? And where y'all placed her. So wherever the most high place us, we're still supposed to represent the most high all the time, always, each of us, you know? And so uh, the work is plenty, but the labor is a few. So every man, woman, and child on the phone, we need your help to esteem the name of Yah with your behavior, with your mannerism. That's why children, when we're teaching these words, when your parents are teaching you at home and when you go out to school, when you, wherever you are, you still need to be in the conduct of a child of Yah. To the adults, whether we're at work, whether we're at school, uh, because some of us are in school, whatever that may be, we should be representing the most high Yah. We should always be the light. Now we shouldn't be offensive with our delivery to those who don't know the truth, but we should be as informative as possible with a very compassionate and uh, a wise delivery. You know what I'm saying? Um, just like when people uh, tell me, uh, my, in my doctor's appointment today, uh, the lady said, uh, happy new year to you. I said, well, I actually don't ce celebrate new years and I don't celebrate the holidays. I said, but uh, may you be blessed on this day. And I say I'm blessed because the Most High uh, has me here today, and I'm doing well. So I give all praise, honor, esteem to the Most High. I didn't do it in the fit. Oh, you shouldn't. You shouldn't create New Year. Don't say that to me. No, that's not how we do it. But still, just don't. We, I'm not being as supportive of. And then you also have to know when and when not to. Every scenario is not a time for you to, because again, it tells you there's certain people that you shouldn't even try to correct. There's gonna be some people that's gonna be markers and scorners. So. Also, let the Ruach of the Spirit let you know when to say something or when not to. It can just be the person that's ringing the bell outside of a store and you walking past, you're in motion. So if they say something, something to you, you just say, have a good day and just keep it moving. But when it's somebody that you have constant communication with, someone you have a relationship with, such as doctors and people, uh, employees, co-workers and things like that, you know what I'm saying? You have to be you in Yah with wisdom because even if they don't get it when you first say it, when a loved one becomes sick, when they're hospitalized, when something goes wrong, they're gonna to look to you for prayer. And I'm telling you, I know this for a fact because I've been contacted by many people. And one guy that got fired from the job told me, I don't know what it is about you, but everybody just wanna be around you because you have such a good spirit. That's because all the profanity that everybody on the job uses, they've never heard me use a profane word because I don't do profanity. When guys talk that, you know, guy talk on the job about women and stuff like that. I do not engage that type behavior because that just be a light and be a representative of Yah. So thank you, Zakane, for your words, because that's what we're coming together for so that we can truly be his witnesses. So praise y'all, praise y'all, praise y'all. All right. So we're going to get ready to close, Mishra Kai. Um, Zakane Eliyahu, I didn't know if you had any words before we close. Is he still on? Because I can't see my whole screen. I can't, I got to. Okay, he didn't, he's, his he's, hands he's still on, Maury. Okay, I don't, I don't see his hand. I had to get my screen back up, so I don't see his hand. So I guess he's told. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, Miss Elizabeth, we'd like to uh, welcome you tonight. Uh, I'm glad you were able to get in the room. So, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. 
I'm glad you made it in the room tonight. Praise be to the most high. Praise be to the most high. All right. Uh, before we close out, is there any, any uh, questions in regards to what we went into tonight? Right. Maury, I just want to just want to say, uh, 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 Zakay and Eliyahu just put in the in the chat that Tob Tob lesson. Okay, okay, thank you, Zakay. Thank you, Zakay. All right. Well, if there's no 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 uh, questions on the floor tonight, we give all praise and esteem to the Most High. I'm going to ask uh, Captain Yohanan, if you would, uh, Captain, if you can do the closing prayer for us tonight. Canada down. So kill your minds. Heavenly Father, the Lord our God, Yahuwah our Elohim, we come to you as a Mitzvah, as a family, as a community, to tell you, told our Yah, thank you, Heavenly Father, for getting us through this week, Abba. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the beginning and start of the Shabbat album, a day of rest, a day of peace, and a day of fellowship, coming there as a family, worship, learning of you, Abba. We want to say thank you, Yah, for the help you had given us over and over again, so that we, as a Mitzvah, we as a family, we as your children, we as a nation can stand before you rejoicing in the certainty of the fate of you, our, our King, our Almighty, our Elohim, our God, our power. We thank you for guiding and leading our lives and for letting us see a goal ahead and that goal is to get to the kingdom, Abba, the righteous path, Abba, to your righteous kingdom, Abba. A goal to reveal the goodness of you, Abba, to all your people, regardless of what nation, what nationality, what background we are, we are all your children, Abba. We are all your creation. No matter what they believe out there, Abba, we are your creation, and there's none us without you, Abba. So we want you to be with us in silence when we sometimes seem to be alone, Abba. But we know that we are not alone because you are with us, Abba. We could turn to you, Abba, and we could turn to each and every one of us, Abba, because we are the Mitzvah, we are the family. And we as a community of your children, Abba. So Abba, keep us strong and stand fast through temptation and through all that wickedness that surrounds us in our life, Abba. Because we know that once we trust in you, Abba, the little things, the, the hardest things that seem to be hard, Abba, become simple. So help us continue to stay unshaken. For you walk with us, Abba. You hold us by the hand, even though we might not see it in a physical form, but we see it in a spiritual form that you hold us by the hand. You walk with us, Abba. You protect us, Abba. And you will lift, up, lift us up above everything, Abba, that we go through. That is a righteous Elohim. That is a loving father, a loving creator, a loving king, Abba. We want to say thank you, Abba, for your protection that you continue giving us, your his protection, Abba. And Abba, I just want to pray for the sick, Abba, that you continue healing the sick, Abba, no matter if they're physically sick, Abba, mentally sick, Abba, or spiritually sick, Abba. They need you to heal their body. They need you to heal their minds. 
and they need you to heal their souls, Abba. Because you are the healer of all healers, Abba. We want to say, told our Yah for all your faith and servants that had gone before in the ancient times that walked in the character of you, that was obedient to your set of commands, that were leading and teaching your children how to live righteous, how to please you, Abba. Back from Noah all the way to Mashiach, Yahshua Mashiach, we want to say Torah Yah for them, Abba. We want to praise them, Abba, for being so obedient, Abba. Showing their love to you, Abba. Showing how righteous they was to you, Abba, so we could learn from them to walk in the character of you, Abba, which is pleasing in your sight. Abba, we want to be pleasing in your sight, Abba. So we ask you always for your for forgiveness for any transgressions that we commit against you, even the ones that we don't know that we committed, Abba. We just ask you for your forgiveness, Abba. As you forgive us, Abba, let each and one of us forgive the ones that we feel to transgress against us, Abba. Like how we expect for you to forgive us if we can't forgive them, Abba. So told her, yeah, told her, yeah, told her, yeah, for your mercies, your love, and your kindness that you continue showing your children, Abba. Continue showing us, Abba. You could have been destroyed this earth been wiped us off for all the stuff that's been going on by Abba. But you continue showing your love to your children. And sometimes your children, your children do not see that love that you've given us, Abba. They don't see the chances that you've given us, Abba. When we're able to open our eyes to see another day, and that's to get it right with you, Abba. So told our Yah for not giving up on your children, Abba. For always showing your love to your children, Abba, for leading your children, Abba, because you are waking up your children and bringing them back to you, Abba. We've been in a deep sleep for ages, Abba, and we surely but slowly coming out of that deep sleep we was in, Abba. And that's all because of you, Abba, because you want your children to come back to you. Yes, you put us in punishment, Abba. Yes, we had got beatings and whippings, Abba. But it was life learning lessons, Abba, that the way to get out of this suffering, Abba, is turn to you. You are our redeemer. You are our savior. And you are the salvation of your pe our people, Abba. So, Abba, on behalf of everyone that's lying on your children from the four corners of the earth, we all want to let you know that we love you. We serve you. We honor you, almighty Yah. And we esteem your set-apart name. Blessed be you, Yahuwah Elohim. Blessed be the name of Yahuwah Elohim. And blessed who come in the name of Yahuwah Elohim. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Powerful prayer, Don. Powerful prayer. Total rabbi. Total rabbi. All praise, honesty, and be to the most high. Yeah. Well, Mishpaka, I'm going to say a Haben Shalom, which is I love you all. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. May the most high watch over, bless, protect you, and give you Shalom as you rest this night. And hopefully we all wake up in the morning ready to praise his set apart name with some cameras on. I want to see some faces. Y'all know Friday nights, we, you know, on Shabbat Eve, you know, cameras be off a little bit, but let us see each other face tomorrow, Mishpaka. Y'all, let us see some smiling faces so we can praise y'all tomorrow. So I'm uh, looking forward to you. I'm looking forward to uh, fellowship in the AM. So uh, may y'all get some rest. May you enjoy the rest of your Shabbat on this night. Laila Tob, Laila Tob, which is good night. Shabbat Shalom.